Today we're starting off our tutorial by importing our PSD into After Effects. As you can see here, I have my old painting with all of the back paintings completed and have all of my separate assets on separate layers. Every layer in this PSD will appear in After Effects, even if it is turned off in Photoshop. You can either delete any unwanted layers in Photoshop before you save your PSD, or you can simply delete them within After Effects. So go ahead and open After Effects, double click in the project panel, a dialog box will appear. Find your PSD and double click. For import kind, select composition, retain layer size. I typically select edible layer styles for the layer options as this will keep the exact appearance of your PSD layers. And that's including any changes you may have made within opacity or fills within Photoshop. We now see our PSD appears with our project panel. All of the layers are within the composition already. If we click the folder, we can see each individual layer as well. Double click the composition and the Photoshop layers all appear within our timeline now as individual assets. Remember, I have a few layers I can go ahead and delete since I did not delete my unwanted layers in Photoshop. Our timeline indicates the composition is set at a 30 second duration. If you want to change that, Simply go to Composition, then Composition Settings to adjust the duration. Make any other changes you may want to for your composition as well. Alright, let's get into adding some motion-based elements. First up, I've decided to have this man's hand and cane trembling. To accomplish this, I will use the Wiggle expression for the position property. I will select my layer, press P for position, press Alt Option, and click on the stopwatch to open the position expression text box. I'll type out wiggle 510. This will have the shape randomly wiggle for the entirety of the animation. The first value 5 represents how fast the wiggle will happen, while the second value 10 represents the magnitude of the wiggle. Let's watch in action by pressing spacebar. Notice that no keyframes are created for this expression. Therefore, the expression will happen for the entirety of the composition. Let's move on to our next asset that we are adding motion to. I plan for both birds to rotate slightly back and forth. I'll start by selecting a layer for the front bird. Press R for rotation. Make sure your time indicator is at the beginning of the composition. Then click the stopwatch to enable keyframes. Then move the time indicator to where you want the end point of the rotation to move. I've decided this is at one second. Now I am selecting the rotate tool hot key W, and I can click and hold the bird layer to rotate it. Notice, after it's rotated, a new keyframe has been created. If we watch the composition, we see the bird slowly rotates upward. I'm happy with this motion, so I will now select both keyframes, Apple C to copy, move the time indicator to 2 seconds, Apple V to paste. Now the bird is rotating back and forth. I'm continuing to copy and paste these keyframes until I have reached the end of my composition. I'm now adding easy ease. By selecting all of the keyframes, right clicking on a keyframe, keyframe assistant, and then easy ease. Remember, easy ease helps motions ease into stopping points and ease out of stopping points. This makes the motion look more fluid. So I'm about to add a similar rotation to the back bird. However, I've noticed that I actually forgot to clone stamp out part of the cage that goes in front of the bird. I'll go fix that in Photoshop real quick and re-import just the bird as a new PSD. I've done my clone stamping in Photoshop and have deleted all other layers in the Photoshop file before importing it again to After Effects. I will double click in the project panel, select my new PSD and click open. I'm using the same import options as I initially did. Now we see the new PSD appears in the project panel. I can click on the folder to see the individual layer, then click and drag this to my timeline. I will use the selection tool to move the bird to its designated position within my composition. Now I am ready to adjust the rotation property. With the layer selected, press R for rotation. Make sure your time indicator is at the beginning of the composition. Then click the stopwatch to enable keyframes. Move the time indicator to where I want the end point of the rotation to be. Again, I've decided this is at one second to match the timing of the first bird's motion. Now I am selecting the rotate tool, hotkey W, and I can click and hold the bird layer to rotate it. 
Notice again, after it's rotated, a new keyframe has been created. I've decided to have the birds moving in different directions at different times, which is as simple as reversing the placement of the two keyframes. I'll copy and paste these down the timeline to see the motion. I've now decided to offset the timing of the birds. I'll select the keyframes and drag them to start at half a second. This is almost good. However, I want this bird's motion to start right away, not at the half second mark. So I will bring my time indicator back to the starting point and adjust the rotation, creating a new keyframe. Basically, I need to have the bird only move half of the full motion it does in the rest of the composition for it to be consistent. I can see the full rotation the bird does for one second is 4.9. If I divide in half, I now know to enter roughly 2.5 for my rotation starting point. Looking good. Now I'm going to copy and paste these keyframes for the rest of the composition. Then add Easy Ease by selecting all of the keyframes, right clicking on a keyframe, Keyframe Assistant, Easy Ease. You will notice however that in the original painting, the bird in the back is actually behind part of the cage, whereas our bird currently looks like it's in front of the cage. This is an easy fix. Masks are an incredibly convenient way of hiding part of a layer while retaining the original layer. In this example, I want to hide part of this bird, so it appears to be behind the cage bars. To create a mask, select the layer you want it to be on, then use the shape or pen tool. Since the area I want to be masked is not a perfect rectangle shape, I'm going to use the pen tool. I'm creating a rectangle shape that is mimicking the shape of this bar. We see that the entire bird has disappeared except for within this rectangular shape. This is alright. To fix this, we need to change our mask from add to subtract, meaning wherever the mask is present, it will subtract that area from the layer. Select the layer, press M for mask, change add to subtract. That looks better. I'm going to create one more mask for the second bar, again using the pen tool. Change this mask from Add to Subtract. Now, I will zoom in using Apple Plus and fine tune the placement of my points, still using the pen tool. Now the bird successfully appears to be sitting behind these bars. The Puppet Warp tool can seem a bit intimidating, but it's actually much simpler than it may seem at first. First, I'm going to use the Puppet Warp tool to get our man's shoe going up and down like he is tapping to a beat. I will select the shoe layer, then select the Puppet Position Pin tool. There are many different Puppet Warp tools, but today we will focus on this one. To start using the Puppet Warp tool, I will first place my pins. Pins represent areas on a layer that can be moved independently. I want the front of this man's foot to move up and down, while keeping the heel of the foot in the same position. To accomplish this, Let's start by placing a pin in the toe area. Then, I will place multiple pins near the heel. When multiple pins are placed near each other, the area they are placed on will move less. If we come down to our timeline, it can start to look a bit complicated. I'll select the layer, press U, and all of our puppet pins will appear. Notice, each individual pin is able to be keyframed. You can click on an individual pin in the composition window to select the pin within the timeline. Remember, I only want to move one of these pins for this motion. Therefore, I can go ahead and delete these keyframes for the pins in the heel. The first keyframe for the pin in the toe is already set up. So now I will move the time indicator to the end point of the motion, which I've decided to be one and a half seconds. Now I can grab the pin in the composition and move it freely until it is in the desired location. Notice, a keyframe is created. Once I'm happy with the motion, I can either copy and paste the keyframes for the duration of the composition, or alternatively, I can use the loop out expression. To do this, I will press Alt Option and click on the stopwatch, which opens up the expressions text box. Then simply type loop out. Now the motion will continue till the end of the video. 
So that was pretty simple. I'll use the Puppet Warp tool again, but this time with more pins. I'll select the red blanket layer, select the Puppet Position Pin tool, and then start placing my pins. As I'm placing my pins, I'm thinking of the areas that should stay relatively still, and I'm placing more pins there. Then, only placing one or two pins in areas that I plan to have motion. If we look down at our timeline, we can select the layer, press U to open up all of our pins individually. Currently, all of the keyframes for the pins sit at the starting point of the composition. To add motion, I'll start by moving the time indicator to where I want the end point of the motion to be, and then I'll start to move my pins. Looking back down at the timeline, we now see new keyframes for all of the pins we've moved. This makes them easy to select. I'll now copy and paste these for the duration of the composition. Then add Easy Ease, select Keyframes, right-click Keyframes, Keyframe Assistant, Easy Ease. Looking good. Let's go ahead and add some music. Importing music and sound in After Effects is pretty simple. Just drag and drop the file into the timeline. The file will appear as its own layer. Time to export. Go to Composition, Add to Render Queue. We're using the same settings we have so far in this course. Leave Render Settings to Best Settings, click on Lossless to adjust Output Module, Format should be set to QuickTime, click on Format Options and change to Apple Pro Res 444, leave the remaining settings. Click on Output 2 to select the area the file will save on your computer, then press Render. Now we have our finished composition as a .mov file and it plays great. However, the size of the file is quite large, sitting at 4.92 gigabytes. This large of a file will be hard to email, or to submit to Dropbox, social media, etc. So let's go ahead and bring it into Media Encoder to shrink it a bit. From within After Effects, you can send your composition to Media Encoder by selecting Composition, Add to Adobe Media Encoder Queue. This will trigger Media Encoder to open and should send the file over. As you can see, it has appeared here. We can double check the output setting by clicking H.264. Now, the composition has not fully loaded into Media Encoder. You can certainly wait for this, however, if you are in a time crunch and you've already rendered the file through After Effects, you can also just drag and drop this file into Media Encoder. I find this to be quicker. We can click on H.264 again to open up the output settings. For purposes of this class, you will leave the format as H.264. This will save the file as a .mp4. We'll use Match Source, Ensure Export Video, and Export Audio are checked. Feel free to look at these other settings. For now, you really shouldn't need to adjust any of this. Then press OK. Click on Output 2 to change where the file is being saved. Then press on the green play button. You will see the progress bar work across the screen. Then you can open up your new file. Let's now compare the size of our original file and our new file. The original .mov was sitting at 4.92 gigabytes, and our new .mp4 is only at 47 megabytes. One more look at our final composition.
I really hope that this tutorial helps you with this exercise as you start to explore the possibilities within After Effects. Best of luck.